Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. We added this shed to our property a few months ago and since then I was able to build and add some garage type shelves for extra storage. If you missed that video, I'll have it linked for you if you're interested. Well, I finally had some time to be able to paint the shed to not only make it look more appealing, but also to help protect it from the outside elements. Stick around to see how I did and how you could paint a shed. This is what it looks like for now. The first thing that I have to do is I'm gonna go ahead and start caulking everything, all of the seams, all of the holes from the nails and stuff, and then I can start priming. But until I am able to cover all of those holes, I'm not gonna prime. I want this to look good and to obviously last a long time, so I'm trying to do as good of a painting job as I can. I am gonna be using a new sprayer that I haven't used before. It's the Graco Magnum X7, I think it's called. One thing that I did want to mention is I waited way too long to start painting this. I'm going to show you up close the damage on the wood already where you can see where it's starting to split because it's being exposed to the elements and it doesn't have a barrier to protect it. So if you build something, paint it or seal it, protect it right away. Don't waste any time and don't wait because you will see the effects. Now I'm hoping I can reach all the way up there with my step stool there, but if I can't, then I'll have to get the ladder, which is fine. I don't mind using the ladder, but uh, yeah, let's uh, go ahead and get started because I've got a lot of work to do. So let's get to it. Okay, so first things first, caulk. I'm using a ready to paint in 20 minute caulk suitable for indoor and outdoor projects. It's a latex caulk plus silicone. As far as I know, this is the only one that makes a 20 minute ready caulk. I'm not sure if there's any others available. You do wanna make sure and seal all and any holes you may have whether from staples or nails, any and all seams as well. Not only does this prevent any moisture from seeping into those holes and creating damage, but it also helps to give a more seamless look once it's painted. Even if you were to be rolling and brushing the paint, this step should not be avoided. I think I'm finally ready to start priming the machine so that I can start spraying. It's an airless sprayer. I am gonna be hooking it up to my Jackery solar power generator because I don't have power out here uh, in the very back of my property. So we'll see how that works. I think it should hold up pretty well. If I run out of battery, I have it at a 100% charge, I'll go ahead and go get my solar panel so that I can charge it out here before I can continue to spray, but we'll see how long it lasts for me. Hopefully it lasts me a full charge and hopefully I can get this whole entire thing painted. But let's go ahead and prime this. I went ahead and powered it on. So let's see. We run about 30 to 60 seconds of just water. And then we can go ahead and get our paint and switch this bucket out to the paint so that we can run paint through it. We don't need that bucket no more. We're gonna move this bucket over here. And then we're gonna run it until we get paint through here. waste all the paint. This is why we wore 
dirty clothes so we don't have to worry about our clothes. After priming the machine hoses, I primed the gun and then began spraying. I will have a separate video on how to use this gun including priming it, cleaning it, and using all of its settings in case you're interested in buying it but not really sure or feel like it may be too much to handle. As you can see, it's very simple to spray and once you get going, it goes pretty quickly. After priming, I had to clean the sprayer to get it ready for the paint. I've already got my sprayer primed and I've also already sprayed the back side of the shed. I figured there was no point in me showing you spraying the back because it's literally the same as spraying any of the sides or the front. You will notice that I'm not going to be super peculiar about spraying the, the trim because I am going to be painting that a different color than the color that I'm using for the actual shed. Now I also want to note that if you notice you can really if you pay attention you can really see uh, the primer went on a little bit splotchy on a couple of spots. It was my first time using this sprayer, so I wasn't obviously 100% familiar with it. But now that I've sprayed the color on the back, I can actually see how much and where I'm spraying. It's a lot easier to see when you're using... Ah, it's a wasp! Um, it's a lot easier to see when you're using a color versus something like white because it's hard to see where you're overlapping and how much you're overlapping but it doesn't look like I have that issue over on the back where I can see the color. The last time that I sprayed the primer it took me roughly 45 minutes from the start of actually priming the gun and setting everything up and actually spraying. The spraying part probably only took me roughly 20 to 30 minutes. So if you really calculate how long it takes you to spray an entire shed like this size, I believe this is a 12 by 16 or 14 by 16, um, I think is a lot quicker than rolling the paint. But, you know, obviously you pick and choose because you do have to do some prep work when it comes to spraying that you don't have to do with necessarily with rolling so kind of decide which you would prefer i prefer spraying just because it's a lot quicker when it goes to like applying it to each their own it is more than likely going to need a second coat just to get a hundred percent full coverage and obviously we want full coverage we don't want any splotchiness i ended up only using about maybe two and a half to three gallons of the five gallon primer bucket and I'm expecting to use twice as much as that because I am doing two coats as opposed to just one. I also wanted to mention that my Jackery is holding up so well, which is so cool because I never thought to use that out here whenever I need to do certain projects or something. So this is definitely bringing a light bulb to my head and making me think of all the projects I could possibly do out here where I don't have electricity because my Jackery is solar powered. For me to prime the entire thing, clean the machine, prime the machine and everything, it only used up 4% of a 95% charge. So we'll see how much charge I have left after I paint this first coat. Um, I also am using the baby monitor on there to make sure I can keep an eye on the baby, make sure he's still asleep while I'm doing this. But yeah, it doesn't use that much charge, which is pretty cool. So anyway, let's go ahead and start spraying and get to work. I think the trick to getting the best coverage is to make sure you are overlapping properly. With the primer, it may not necessarily be as important or you could be a little more relaxed about it, but you definitely want to avoid a splotchy color finish. You can see that I'm working in smaller sections, overlapping each pass by at least 40 to 50%. The recommended is usually 50%, but I try to at least reach for that 40% mark. And then keeping the gun at about a 12 inch distance from what I'm spraying, is the safe distance to this specific gun, depending on what your frame, the distance may be different. But the correct distance is so important to avoid over or under saturating each spot and avoiding drips. Another thing to mention in order to avoid drips or under or 
oversaturating each spot is making sure you're not standing still in one spot more than you should. You should be swiftly moving back and forth, whether up and down or side to side, never leaving your sprayer to spray in a single spot. This sprayer specifically has very little overspray in my opinion compared to any other smaller sprayer I've used in the past for furniture, which is why I avoided taping and covering the window. I would suggest not skipping covering the areas you don't wanna overspray if this is your first time spraying because you may not be as comfortable and two, you may not just be there yet. Plus I was being a little bit lazy, I'm being honest and that's why I didn't cover it. Ideally, I almost always cover spaces I don't want to overspray, even if I've been doing this for some time. This is obviously something you wouldn't even have to think about or do if you were rolling instead of spraying. Now that I am done painting this, this is still kind of wet. It's still a little bit sticky. I just finished spraying it. That probably won't be dry until the end of day and won't be cured for a while, but now that I'm done spraying all of the color, I want to go back and do all of the trim, which is why you see it not sprayed all the way with the other color that I used. For contrast, I'm going to be using a black color on the trim. And this color is actually called Iron Ore, which is a pretty popular Sherwin-Williams color. It's like a really dark gray, almost black, like on the softer side of black. And I didn't bother to spray it just because I feel like it's just such a small amount. It'd probably be faster to roll it on or brush it on than to actually use a um, sprayer for this. I'm just gonna do a couple of coats of this and obviously I'm gonna have to wait my dry times in between. Just gonna get some of that color on here before I can put it on there. Another thing to remember when rolling versus spraying is keeping in mind that if you roll, you will need to cut in all of the edges first with a brush since a roller is harder to reach in corners and edges. A roller would also not likely get into ridges, so like this siding has ridges in between each supposed panel, I would have had to use a brush to paint in between them because the roller would not be getting in there. And that alone takes even more time. This is why I prefer spraying versus rolling because the actual application of the paint goes a lot faster. It does sometimes require a little bit more prep work, but not necessarily. For something like this where there's one very small window that needed to be covered, other than that, I didn't have to worry about anything else. Now here's the after what my shed looks like. I hope that I was able to show you just how easy it is to spray versus brushing when it comes to painting. And if you've been thinking about it, but have held back due to fear or not knowing how to use a sprayer or thinking it's just too hard, then I hope I was able to ease some of that fear and encourage you to try it if you have the means to. Cost I know is another factor for why people choose to roll and use a brush versus spraying, but even with the paint supplies and the sprayer, it is still a fraction of what it would have cost me to have someone else paint it for me and if I would have paid them instead. I hope you found all of the information, tips, and tricks helpful, and if you did, don't forget to give this video a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel for more DIY content. I love y'all, be kind, and I'll see y'all next time. Bye.